Hey there, welcome back to our Harkle YouTube channel. We're so happy to have you here today. I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkla. And today we're gonna to talk about the spinal gallant reflex and the connection to bowel and bladder control. If you are new here, if you are an old friend, you know we love primitive reflexes. Today we're gonna to talk about this very specific topic. For me personally, it's something that has come up in a lot of conversations with people that I know, people on the internet, and I just feel like we needed a specific topic in case you have a child who is struggling with bowel and bladder control, with bedwetting, all the things we'll talk about. If this is you, this video is for you, so you're welcome. If you are a parent and your child is a toddler and you are starting to think about, or you've already started the process of potty training, and you notice that your child is really struggling to identify when they need to go to the bathroom, or maybe they know, but they're not able to fully control it, and it seems like it's taking a really long time, you're not having success with potty training, this could actually be a sign that your child has a retained spinal gallant reflex because there is a connection here. Mm -hmm. If you have a child who is maybe holding their bowel movements or they're constipated all the time, it could be, we're not saying always, we're saying it could be connected to a retained spinal gallant. Yeah. Another one for older children, They've already gone through potty training. They're good to go, no problems, but sometimes they wet the bed at night, a couple of times a week. You're noticing that they are struggling with that continence during the night. They're waking up because they peed the bed. There's also a connection with that to retain spinal gallant reflex. Or maybe you are an adult or you have an older child who is having consistent IBS symptoms and maybe ruled out food intolerances or other, other issues, maybe look at the spinal gallant reflex because there is research that shows a potential connection between a retained spinal gallant reflex and some irritable bowel syndrome type symptoms. If any of those sound familiar, if you are like checking the boxes, yep, that's my child, then what we want to do is rule out a retained spinal gallant reflex. So that means we encourage you to learn more about the spinal gallant. We're going to talk a little bit more about it today, so keep watching. But then we want to encourage you to go through the process of getting it tested and working on integrating it and helping your child through that process to then see those positive outcomes in these areas we're talking about. Yeah, a little background on the spinal gallant reflex. It's a really neat reflex because it, it's they're all, neat. They're all neat. They're all neat, okay? <laughs> this one is neat because it specifically helps with the birthing process. So the contractions are, you know, really stimulating the infant's body as they're moving down the birth canal. And when you stimulate the spine of the baby, it kind of has like a ticklish response. And you'll see this movement once the baby has been born and you test that reflex, you'll see that ticklish response side to side. So that's how it helps with the birthing process. It kind of helps to move the baby down the birthing canal. And what else is neat about this reflex, God, I love birth so much. We should just do a whole episode on birth, but we'll save that for later. The other cool thing is this reflex is kickstarted into integration by the vaginal birthing process. So when you interfere, quote unquote, interfere with that natural birthing process, that can be a potential for the future reflex to not integrate on time or as it should. So it's just helpful information to know this is what's happening during the birthing process. This is why it's happening. If maybe baby came out via C-section, it's really important to know that maybe we can have a retained spinal gallant later down the road because of that, you know, for no, no one's fault, we're not causing blame or anything like that. We're just saying the more information you have, the merrier. And if you're going through your history and you're like, oh, yep, we had a C-section, my baby didn't crawl, my baby didn't, you know, whatever it is, you can at least kind of rule out or identify if it really is connected to a retained spinal gallant. 
Yeah, some other things that you can look at is if you do have a baby, you can hold them on your arm, they're on their stomach on your arm, and you can just gently stroke your finger along their spine and you will see that movement in their hips and their lower back. That's the spinal gallant reflex. We want to see that happening in infancy. For an older child, we don't want to see that reaction. If we do see that reaction, when we put pressure along their spine in an older child, that tell us, tells us that that spinal gallant reflex is stuck and could potentially be impacting them with some of those things that we talked about at the beginning of the video, challenges with toilet training, staying dry at night, that kind of thing. The other interesting thing, like Jessica was talking about holding the baby and stimulating the sides of the spine, that also generally will elicit urination as well. So there's the connection there to bedwetting, bowel and bladder control, IBS. So that's why when you have an older child who is wetting the bed at night, when they're tossing, turning, they have their clothes that are stimulating their spine, the sheets, whatever it is that's stimulating their spine, that could be potentially what's causing them to wet the bed at night because they don't have, it's a reflex, right? They can't control it. So that's why it's happening at night when it's completely out of their control. Yeah. If you have a child and they are struggling with a retained spinal gallant reflex, you can do one very specific activity that will be helpful. We're going to show you how it is something you probably, I mean, it's not really complex. No. It's pretty simple. And that is the snow angel exercise. So, you know, when it's snowing outside and you go lay down and you move your arms and your legs, you stand up and you have this beautiful snow angel on the ground. That's what we want you to do with your child. Yep. So you can get down on the floor, you can do it outside if you want to in the leaves or the snow or the rain or whatever you want to do and do those open and closing arm movements and leg movements simultaneously do them slowly maybe try to change it up and do just legs and then just arms and then just left leg and right arm and then right leg and left arm at the same time try to do it as slow and controlled as possible and that's one way that you can help kickstart this reflex into integration yep. if you want more information on this reflex along with a variety of other primitive reflexes that that we love to talk about. We highly encourage you to check out our digital course. We teach you the ins and outs of all these different primitive reflexes. We teach you how to test for them and we teach you how to integrate them. And this course is designed for children ages five and up. Yeah, and I'm also thinking if you are concerned and you're noticing a lot of these challenges that are really impacting your child's daily functioning, Make sure that you get an OT evaluation, you get a referral from your pediatrician, maybe even look at a chiropractor, maybe look at a pediatric neuro-focused uh, like PDX doc type chiropractor. I kind of like to use chiropractic care as a prerequisite to OT to help that nervous system regulate. Again, your preference, but it's something that has helped our clients, helped our kids, and it's just something to look into, just something to, to rule out and see if it helps. Yeah, when in doubt, rule it out exactly. every time. Uh, we do have other videos about the spinal gallant reflex as well as the other primitive reflexes that are in the course. So if you're not quite ready to jump into the course yet, check out our other videos. We will link them in the description below so that you can just start absorbing as much mm -hmm. information as possible. If you need more information to absorb, definitely check out our podcast, All Things Sensory by Harkla. It's on all major podcast platforms. It's also on video on Spotify and on YouTube. So definitely check out those episodes. Yes. If you found this video helpful, we would love to hear from you. Please leave us a comment and let us know if you have questions, if you are familiar with this, if you've had some success in primitive reflex integration, we would love to hear your comments about that. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and share this video with a friend. Yep. You can also find us on social media. Come hang out, share your story there at all things sensory podcast, as well as at Harkla underscore family. All right. Thanks so much for being here and we will talk to you next week. Okay. Bye. Type symptoms. Got it. Just lock it down. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs>